Hi everyone, Nubkex here, and uh, in today's video we're going to be checking out, and I'll give you my thoughts and my uh, impressions, of the developer preview video that just came out today for patch 9.2, which is actually going to be the final big patch for World of Warcraft Shadowlands. Uh, let's click play, let's dive in here. Does this live up to your expectations the of the final patch? The story pulls together threads that started in Warcraft 3 and wove their way through many of our expansions. We approached it like kind of. <laughs> a drama in three acts. Now, as the third and final act begins of the saga, we need to stop the Jailer from reaching his ultimate goal, which is to rewrite the rules of reality. Eternity's End serves as the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. Yeah, so there you go. Confirming this is 9.2. It is the final patch. Uh, I'm 100% I'm calling bullshit, at least on their initial... I guess, you know, let's be fair. Their initial plans for Shadowlands, I almost 100% guarantee you, did not have patch 9.2 being the final patch. You look at BFA, you look at Legion, there should have been, there ought to have been a patch 9.3. Obviously with the expansion being delayed, with COVID, and who the heck knows all the problems that Blizzard, the myriad problems that Blizzard these days, uh, they clearly, their ability to produce content is clearly just not very good, I'm gonna be honest. There's a severe lack of content, this has been a very slow patch to come out. And you can understand, like, this is, let's say this comes out hypothetically in, like, February. Let's say it's February. Uh, there's just, they want to get another expansion out next year, somewhere in the August to November time frame. Um, there's no way they can squeeze in another major 9.3 patch. It's just not possible. So this being the last patch is not a surprise to me. It's a disappointment for the expansion as a whole. I think this is a very bare bones expansion. Very bare bones. It's very much, uh, very much like Warlords of Drain or 2.0. So yeah, I'm just sort of hoping that hopefully the next expansion they'll have time to develop lots of content for it. Hopefully, the I don't know. Has the advantage. He has seized the sigils of the leaders of the Four Covenants. We see Sylvanas realize that she's been a pawn in the Jailer's game this entire time. What? And she refuses what? to serve him oh and she's God. taken prisoner. The Jailer Crazy. is able to open a portal to who knows where, taking Anduin with him. And the Primus had us take some time to retrieve some new sigils. Now we have gathered our forces. We are we working all with the, the Primus to open our own gateway to pursue the Jailer to this realm unlike any we've seen before. Okay, so new zone, Zareth Mortis. The Zareth Primus Mortis. opens a portal and we come into this alien land. It's completely white, foggy, we're walking on water for some reason. Ooh. We can only make out some shapes, some figures there, some crazy devices and consoles. That's pretty Eventually, cool. Eventually you make your way to a giant gate and behind it lies Zareth Mortis. Yeah, I mean, the zone looks cool. Zareth Mortis was created by the first one. Looks really cool. And it is intended like to that. create afterlives. Think of it as being tucked away in the fabric of the Shadowlands itself. It's kind of the behind the scenes of these It's a really pretty zone. Oh, it's, it's got like sandy areas and watery the areas. Ones who created all of the realms of the Shadowlands. Cool. This is their workshop. They've created everything we've experienced in Azeroth and Shadowlands and even realms we haven't discovered yet. I think the zone these looks incredible. First ones built the universe as far as we know one of the things um intentions or methods are completely you know one of the things i didn't like about Corthia, i felt like Corthia was very brown it was very drab uh, what i like about this is it seems like there's quite a bit of variety within the zone quite a lot of color palettes and sort of feelings to it so this zone to me no. looks actually looks kind of cool presence here is disrupting this process and we're working to push back against the jailer's forces and protect this place now, I, I, I think the artists have done a fantastic job. And I know yeah, the concept art's great. I, 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 the, the poor old Jailer, guys. Man, maybe he would have been a good villain with an extra patch to grow and do more stuff. I don't know. But, um, yeah. The J as a villain, like, the real motivation to take him down, compare it to Arthas, like, back in, uh, back in Wrath of the Lich King. And, like, just b the whole expansion building up to fighting Arthas and how epic it was and you're preparing for it. They they just didn't succeed at that with the jailer at all. It's just like oh he's the big bad guy because he's the big bad guy. He's a big bad guy. He, d he just doesn't really as have team, any we really charisma. To make this place as alien as possible. It's like so bad Arthas really and bad Thanos put together, but without the the charm of either. Different. 
our trees here are floating. We I love have the orbs stones floating. That are floating. We Super have cool. The massive forge of afterlives that is floating in the center of the zone. And Yo. true to its name, it's something that is kind of putting together a new afterlife to be sent out into the Shadowlands. Oh, we have this water making like another Shadowlands zone. Because water is really the catalyst for any kind of creation. It's actually unlike any other water that we've seen before. This is actually water that we can walk on. It almost creates like a threshold between yeah, that's cool. and some other kind of more primordial space. Right that's below super it. cool. I like this a lot. Everything you see in Sereth Mortis has a, a purpose, an intention behind it. For us, it was really important to <laughs> find ways to convey that intention in the environment itself. And one of the ways in which we did it was through this duality between a lush and a dry biome. In the dry biome, we see perhaps what the original so the zone like was when two the biomes were first establishing still. this workspace for themselves. And in the lush biome, we see the result of their experimentation. A little robot frog? And fauna and things like that. These okay, great. Test beds for what we'll eventually see. I actually, here. this zone looks great. I think the zone looks great. It looks fantastic. I'm, I'm a big fan of, From of there, it visually. We started thinking looks about cool what explore. kinds of creatures would be in this place that are fundamentally uh, prototypes. There's terraforming here. There's creatures <laughs> little that are being afterlives. We tried to really stretch and think what that might be like. I mean, like the whole broker and first one sort of aesthetic is very familiar. Is the giant armored snail. And it's been all through the Shadowlands, chicken, but which answers the question of what came first. Hmm. Uh, no, yeah. These first ones okay. who crafted Zareth Mortis, what they left behind were the Automa, meant to take care of the place Automa. and make sure that it fulfilled its function to create afterlives. The Automa have several different classes, and you can see this in their silhouettes. We have the builders, we have the protectors, we have the casters, and each one of them have a specific okay. role within the Shadowlands. It, and then you'll also discover very the Jiro, which are a part of the Automa. They're a little more quirky, they have a little more oh, personality. They're cute. Okay. They are a little more sentient than the other Automa, so some of them even split off to pursue their own desires. Unfortunately, when we found our way in, Devourers also found their way in. Ah. They are ravenous. They're consuming this That's pretty cool. That thing in the background looks freaky. I like that. Fall apart. Ooh, and the Automa, where that's cool. they are confronted by them, some of them are fighting them off. And so it's going to take some time okay. for them to understand that we're here trying to help them drive I, out I mean, this threat. <clears throat> I say, you know, on the negative side of that, I, I say that it's like, okay, we've you've already been dealing with the Devourers for the whole expansion. And like these Automa, and a lot of the architecture and stuff is very, very much like... Oribos and and the keepers and all of that so it's it's sort of like those two aesthetics that we've been sort of familiar with sort of reappearing again though um i actually i like how they've they, the the small little changes there like the sort of chunks missing and the bits floating around the the devourers was a cool aesthetic and i do like the look of the otoma actually i think that's pretty cool Fortunately, we've got some allies. I, I, i'm okay with it actually brokers here that we're going to be working with hmm. but it's a broker that arrived here quite a long time ago and mm, more has brokers. Had a change of heart mm. from looking at the world as a very transactional place to seeing okay. this place okay. as a holy place, a sacred place. Hmm. We meet an enlightened one named Fareen, and Fareen needs our assistance, and in return, he leads us. I mean, again, like, again, the only slight issue I have with this is I'm kind of going more brokers. It's like, <laughs> so it's Venari again, kind of. Um, like we're basically already dealing with the brokers in in Corthia. There's a ton of brokers, and uh, you know Tazavesh, the new dungeon, was a big broker dungeon. To hmm. Haven, which is Haven. a hub that has been created out of progenitor ruins, and this is okay. where the enlightened new hub. really have made their home. Yeah, I mean it's just like a, a pretty Corthia hub, basically. As well as use it as a base of operations and really start unlocking the mysteries of. I mean, it's very pretty. I the like the look of it. The brokers are intent on protecting and preserving the work of the first ones here, but now they're seeing Zoval bring his forces against the Atoma and tear up the land, and they are eager for assistance. Don't the destroy the land. The brokers themselves are very ostentatious. They're very into materialism, but the Enlightened are not that at all. Hmm. They have okay. relinquished this material way. Different and culture brokers. See this that could be fun. Their clothes, they're a little tattered. They're a little <clears> faded. You know, if, if, if that sort of carries through into the gameplay at all, uh, I don't know what sort of the gameplay will be, but I think that could actually be quite fun, you know, like sort of a chill, a more chilled, laid back zone and even part of it, hanging out with a bunch of like hippie, hippie brokers, basically, a bunch of hippie brokers with like just chill music and a beautiful chill zone and just like chill out and do your quest, but it's not like stressy or too grindy. It's like, you know, just have a good time, man. Have a good time. That could be kind of cool.
I'd be down for that isn't important to them if they can nail the gameplay side of that, of which is a question. The cipher of the first ones. When players arrive, they're kind of fishes out of water. And one of the first things that we have literally because you learning can't go in the water you walk on it. think of it as a kind of runic language based in symbols mm -hmm. we will bond with a small construct uh, who's pretty cute actually and with his assistance and the assistance of farim uh, we will learn eventually how to understand the symbols hmm. through the cipher of the first ones we'll uncover different parts of this alphabet okay. and start to learn more about the progenitors and xerath mortis itself it will allow you to unlock hmm. new and different forms of content. So that can range from daily quests to new options on the vendors to places to explore and new side quests that open up. So it's really the gateway hmm. to exploring the far reaches of Xerath Mortis. As we looked into... Okay, I, I that could be a cool thing. I... Okay, I didn't like the last part of that. Let me start with that. That sounded quite a boring implementation grind out this language to unlock more daily quests, more quests in different areas, some optional bosses. It's basically like just a time-gated grind, which is more of the same. That's not interesting at all. But on the positive, I think there are some cool ideas about this. I see some potential in that for sure. I think that idea is really cool that there's this language and there's a ton of lore in the zone that you can't quite get access to, that could actually be quite cool. You know, it's like a sort of a, a longer term side quest thing, you know, uh, figuring out, getting different parts of the language and then being able to discover different bits of the lore as you go through a zone. I think that's actually a pretty cool idea. Um, and, and yeah, sort of opening up more interesting sort of side stuff. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, I don't know if the, hopefully they'll have some of that in there. I'm a bit put off by the idea that, oh, unlock this cool new language, uh, not for like interesting lore, or exploring interesting areas, uh, but just, you know, to unlock a daily quest so you can grind dailies. To the development the... of Cypher of the First Ones, we wanted something that was unique that players haven't seen before. A little bit of familiarity, but hmm. something that takes that to the next level. This could really be a cool idea. The whole team in this creative process. We worked with our UI team to Stand be able to represent custom. those through text, through okay. these things talking and seeing them on screen in chat bubbles and, and in our chat window. Little oh, okay. by little, these kind of runes start taking shape into words that we recognize. But it's going to be a process that unfolds over the course of playing through Eternity's End. Hmm. I, I wonder the issue here as well is, of course, you know, uh, I, th I think that could be super cool if you're going to do a blind run. That could be fun actually discovering these secrets bit by bit yourself. I think the big issue is that, you know, you just hop on your guild discord or you hop on wowhead or you watch a streamer and you just you just see everything there. And then it's like, just re-grind it yourself or grind it out, but you have all the answers on hand. I think that would make it a very uninteresting experience for you. But actually for me looking at this, I'm kind of going, hey, I might actually just go through it as a blind thing. Cause I'm not, I'm not actually planning to play that seriously during this patch. Uh, it, was, it was my thoughts, you know, coming up to this, but um, yeah, like going in and doing a blind run and sort of figuring it out bit by bit and slowly uncovering the secrets. If you're going to do a blind run, that's super cool. Is that that practical for most of the players of this MMO and how the MMO works? I don't know that it is. Speak in this kind of musical language. Like, will WoWhead just spoil everything? Oh, you know what I mean? The way that we... Like, probably, yeah. <laughs> so. The sound team was super excited. They jumped mm. in. Uh, they started prototyping. But it's a cool idea. Different sounds. We listened. We gave feedback. And we really ended up in a cool place. As you're playing through and gradually I mean, unlocking the language, you'll be able to see those words in, that they're saying. In theory, that's really cool. Tones. In theory, that's really cool that you could figure stuff out, but again, I'm just worried in sort of the, the mindless the grind of WoW. Has never really been to escape the Will I just get ground down? Power. He's been focused on reaching this place called the Sepulchre, to go into this place of power, Great. and to really rewrite the rules of the universe. We'll learn that the Jailer has bum, breached bum, the Sepulchre of the First Ones, and this becomes our new raid for Eternity's End. We're gonna gather our forces, we're gonna pursue pretty. the Jailer inside. Once you go inside the Sepulchre, 
there are some mind-blowing visuals. This is a place that should not be able That's to cool. exist according to the laws of physics as we know them on Azeroth. Just is that Arthas there? That looks kind of like Arthas. Of seeing these ancient works of the first mm. ones, those laws don't apply to anything we see here. <laughs> it's just it's just this crazy otherworldly place. The, the laws of physics don't apply. Look at these guards lined up on the ground in a line. It's crazy, man. <laughs> Among no, the bosses the that were elevator thing looks cool. The first ones it's a pretty zone. Jailer's forces, maybe it's kind of like old year but pretty. Ends with. Uh, we'll face uh, a Tychondrius? This is similar to a being like Algalon, but the Jailer's gotten to it and has infused his domination okay, magic cool. into the Consular. Before we get to the Jailer, however, okay, big Jaina in the background and first. Uther. Our hope is that we can There's learn Anduin. what Anduin knows about domination. His magic. head looks really big. We need to be able to resist it, or better yet, fight it. Okay. Tier sets. Um, okay, so quick thought on like the raid there. Uh, looks cool. I've actually heard a bit about this because we were talking about it. I, I'm recording this after raid, so I did pick up some info uh, after our raid uh, today. Um, the raid looks cool. Uh, that Algalon thing could have great potential. Algalon had some amazing visuals and was a really cool boss in uh, Ulduar back in Wrath. So that has really good potential. Um, yeah, I'm down for that. Uh, if there's some weird elevator -y boss, that could be really cool too. I'm I have zero hype for fighting Anduin. Honestly, for me, fighting Anduin just seems omega boring. Again, it's just like I don't know. It just seems like it's gonna reference the Lich King. Maybe it'll be a great fight, but I just again I just I don't know. For me, I, what what do you think? For me, there's zero excitement to that. That's just completely uninteresting, to be honest. I really don't care. Uh, and then I guess we'll fight the fight Tychondrius again or whatever whichever death lord death thingy it is I don't yeah okay uh that's sort of a, a boss type we fought a billion times before maybe it'll be an okay fight um and then fighting the jailer at the end I, I actually although the, I think the jailer is kind of a boring character I think that they could make it a really badass fight you know it's quite open-ended in terms of what they do with that fight it has the potential to be super good uh we'll see if they deliver on it have been waiting a long time for the return of tier sets. But that's and the fight with the most potential, I think. It's a great blend of progenitor tier magic, sets. golds and metals, looks along sick. with those that looks great. defining silhouettes, wolves for shamans, pointy like all the lights for rogues. Stuff. It's going to look amazing. Our class and combat team was super excited to bring class sets back. This is something that felt really... People have been asking for class sets. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. This is, this is a case of, like... You versus the guy uh, your mother warned you about or whatever. Like, the concept art actually looks sick. This in-game stuff looks terrible. Look at this set on the left. This looks awful. Like, what the hell are these things? Is that like tassels that are f floating up in the air? The idea being that there's gravity-defying tassels. But then there's, like, tassels on the belt that are just normal. So it's like, what the heck's going on? And like these these knee pads and this it looks like the brawler's guild gear i don't know this looks terrible this set sucks this one um i feel are they, are they just look like the leveling shoulders to be honest it just looks like a leveling set really right for the story okay in the final act we have another set i mean everything looks terrible on a panda um heavier armor okay a me panda and a panda and a mechanome guys what are you doing you can't display sets on these use like humans or orcs or something cool elves saga. We're here. here we go this one looks cool okay uh so let's go back to that one um you can't even really tell what this this gnome's wearing again it looks kind of like a it's a fairly generic priest looking set like the glowy shoulders a robe a hood again this looks like a billion other armors saga. we're here I actually kind of like the look of this one. That's a cool weapon. That's a cool weapon, kind of an Ouroboce first one side of weapon. The set, the color palette sucks on this. I don't like the colors at all, but it looks okay. It looks a bit like a leveling set again, to be honest. Um, the hood's kind of cool. It's a bit unique, but. We're literally on the brink at eternity's end. And this is the best one so far. Okay, I actually like this one. I think this is the rogue armor. So I really like the the glowy, the hood with like the glowy thing in, inside. That's really cool. That's unique. That's different. 
And the shoulders are actually okay with the pointy bits. The rest of it is, is mediocre. I like the hood a lot there. The um, this is the something. <laughs> this is something. Uh, I like the floaty, glowy orbs. Again, the mask is actually kind of okay. Power these classes, and I think players will really enjoy the return of those class sets just as much as the team enjoyed making them. Um, I don't know, man. Along with those class defining silhouettes, wolves for shamans, pointy things for rogues. Wolves it's for shaman, pointy things for rogues. End. Like, back. here's the thing felt... what classes are these? What classes are these? So that's a monk because it's got the necklace. But if you didn't have that necklace, you'd be going like, what class is this? It's like some level 30 leveling armor. What class is this? <laughs> what class is this? Is that supposed to be a shaman with like the sort of the furry bits? I have no idea what really class right that is. The story. We're in the final... What class is this? Maybe death knight with a skull? Maybe? But it could, it could be a warrior? This is probably a priest. Um, Act of the shadow line. This got glowy white Saga. lights. We're... I mean, <laughs> this, this one, this one. I don't know. This is like level thirty cloth wear. Uh, that could be anything. A, a mage, maybe. It was my best guess would be mage. That could easily be priest. If 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 we hadn't seen this previous one, and I'd say that's maybe a bit more priesty. Uh, yeah, that could be anything. That could be any You're cloth caster. I, I actually think this one's pretty cool. This is a pretty cool rogue set. I actually, I like this one. This one's great. And what better I do like this one. I think that's cool. And again, this, is it, a, it could be, it's a shaman, maybe, with the things, the orbs. That's kind of shaman-y. Um, or any cloth. cloth caster. It could be a cloth caster. It could be a male caster. I don't know what. And I think players will. Really I don't know what class that is. Those class sets just as much as the team enjoyed making them. No, I. Uh, we must look at some How of the other pictures of those. That is mystical and magical and incomprehensible uh, and yet understandable. I think we've done a good job of finding that. Line. I don't know about the those class sets at all. So hard, and we are it's disappointing. So excited to get this out for everyone. Oh, that's a cool We're mount. Yo, that's a cool mount. That's a cool mount. Yo. Horrifying. Okay, the mounts and pets were cool. Is the fact that you know some of the spiders. Yo, look at that thing. Okay, that's awesome. Flying spiders, but that's also going to be a cool thing. That's for awesome. People. We have updates to professions. Okay. To soulbinds, to conduits. There's a new dancing okay. mini game in Darkmoon Fair. I'm a story guy, so I'm super geeked about yeah, watching okay. players kind of piece together those little lore tidbits. That's what excites me as well. I'm really looking forward to season three of Mythic Plus. Tazavesh is getting split into two dungeons. Okay, that's finally there. That's good. If you chase Keystone Master, if you're an achievement collector, there's something for everyone to do. In okay, this. it's just Shadow all the same Lambs stuff. Is like the final always chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. And our team is already hard at work on the next stories to come. Can't talk about them quite yet, but when the time is right, we're going to be really excited to share them with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Um, all right. So overall thoughts, overall impressions uh, for the main things. I th Honestly, I feel like overall, I'm actually a little bit more positive having watched this video than I was sort of going into it from the vibes people were going through with the raid. And uh, now I actually sat down and watched this properly. I think the zone looks beautiful. The zone looks really cool. And I really like the idea of the cipher thing. But I'm seriously concerned that that cipher thing is going to suck because of like Wowhead and streamers and stuff like that. I think if you go into it blind, that could actually be really fun. If it's an, a nice chill zone and you're not taking it too seriously and you're sort of enjoying playing through it, I think that could be a fun thing to do. Um... But uh, yeah, I think if you're playing WoW the way I think most people play WoW, I think it might be just another zone. I don't know. I, I, hope, I hope that they'll build on the cool stuff of that, like sort of the chill vibes, a bit more exploration. But yeah, hopefully they can build on that and that'll be good. Um, no new dungeons, no new PvP stuff really. It's just another season. I guess there'll be the new Mythic Keystone uh, affix for the season, which is fine. And the, the two, uh, the Tazavesh dungeon being um, added to the pool. That'll be fun. Um, uh, so we'll have to see what the Mythic Keystone seasonal thing actually is. But it's, it's kind of more of the same. PvP is more of the same, it seems like. Um, yeah, again, the zone itself is beautiful. The raid looks okay. It's just... Honestly, it kind of just looks like just another raid, to be honest. It's just another raid. It really depends on how the fights are actually going to go. I'm a couple of them, like, honestly, Anduin and the Death Death Lord thingy. 
Um, those things aren't interesting. Dreadlord, that's what they're called. Dreadlord, they don't really interest me much at all. It seems like, eh, a bit boring. Uh, I, th I actually hope that the Jailer fight at the end could be good. Uh, and that Algalon thing looks cool. Uh, elevator thing could be cool. So it, it looks like it could be a good raid. I don't know if it really wows me like an end of expansion. I think that comes more from the fact that I really don't have any story investment personally at all, any excitement to fight Anduin or to fight the Jailer. They're just kind of villains for the sake of it. With, yeah, it's just they, they drop the ball in the story so hard that it really takes a lot of that the epicness out of the raid for me, unfortunately. Um, yeah, uh, the tier sets are a big disappointment. I, I've seen some really cool tier sets on like Reddit and stuff and Twitter and people sharing them of like concept art that guys have thrown together. Um, and that stuff was like way better, way better. I think they need to, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think they might need to rejig some of the art leads or something like that because I'm not a big fan of those. Those tier sets are seriously disappointing, if you ask me. Yeah, they're seriously disappointing. I, I don't think they've done a good job on those, to be brutally honest. Don't, where, where even are they? I, I don't think they've done a good job. Um, they look... The concept art looks cool. Look at this. The concept art is way cooler, actually. Like, the concept art's actually decent. Um... The actual sets in game, like, look how cool this is, all the glowy bits and stuff. You know what, actually, conceptually, it looks cool. And then you come in and you look at it in game. To bring class sets back. This is something that and, like, that's that set. It's, like, it doesn't have any of those cool glowy bits. It just doesn't pop. It's, like, super bland. I, I don't know what went wrong there between concept art and actual execution. Yeah. You know, actually, now I look at it, the concept art is great. Look at the monk. The monk set looks pretty cool there. It actually looks kind of badass. And then again, just the in-game model is just trash, to be honest. It just kind of sucks. Oh, look, there's, a de there's the... I'm pretty sure it's Death Knight. That Death Knight set looks cool there. And then you come and you see it in-game, and it's like... <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't know. Maybe the concept artists are fine, but they need to work on those models or something. That's pretty bad. Anyway, okay, that's enough. That's what I think. Let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.